and a Koto Katoa. Um, I'm a Palestinian Christian. My family are Syriac Orthodox. Our church in the old city of Jerusalem is one of three churches claiming to be the first church ever in the world. And that church, the monastery in the old uh, city, is also claimed to be the, the site where Jesus held the Last Supper with his disciples. The Christian quarter in Jerusalem has existed for centuries and the Christians of Palestine, just like the Muslims, have been persecuted, oppressed, beaten and killed for over 75 years. Israel and the Zionist lobby in the West have tried for a long time to make this an issue that is one of Israel against the Muslim extremists, quote unquote. And I can tell you as a young Palestinian Arab growing up in Amman, Jordan, I lived a life where I knew that wasn't true. My uncles, my cousins, who were either members of some of the political movements, the PLFP and others, or were throwing stones in the first intifada, would come to Amman, Jordan to get surgery on their broken arms, or as I re remember very vividly, my uncle needed head surgery because he'd been beaten by batons. He was a Christian Palestinian, he wasn't a Muslim. And the Israelis had never discriminated between the Muslims and the Christians. They beat and they torture and they kill our Palestinian Christians as much as they do our Palestinian Muslims. So Christians, as I said, have always inhabited Palestine. There's nearly 200 different churches in Palestine and a number of very old monasteries. The, the Christians historically were about 20% of the population and sadly, that has dwindled to closer to 6% of the population today. Now Israel, and if you recall and you're watching the news, the Israeli ambassador to the UK very recently said in an interview, there are no Christians in Gaza. She, she was questioned on that and she still didn't believe there were Christians in Gaza because as she claimed, it's the Muslims who have persecuted the Christians and turned them out of the country. That's not true. Christians have immigrated out of Palestine essentially because they've been harassed and lived under the occupation. And the other factor is, much like the Jewish communities of the Arab world, they were the mercantile class, they were the middle classes, and so they actually had the money to emigrate out of Palestine. And that's why they left. A study by one of the Palestinian universities in 2007 surveyed Palestinian Christians globally and asked them why did you leave and overwhelmingly for a range of reasons, uh, summing up, it was the oppression of Israelis and life under occupation is why they left. Only 2%, only 2% uh, said that they left because of harassment or differences with their Muslim brothers. And sure, those differences uh, exist as they do with any minorities or any differences in any society. But the idea that we are treated or persecuted by our Muslim brothers couldn't be further to, from the truth. All my best friends are Muslims from my childhood in Jordan. All my family, friends in Palestine have Muslim friends. In fact, we have a Muslim side to our Christian family. And even more so, we have a Jewish side to our family. Hazza is a name that exists in the old Torah. That's how far back our name goes. So today we have about a million Palestinian Christians exist globally. In historical Palestine, there's about 150 to 200,000 uh, Palestinian Christians. And in the occupied territories, there's about 50,000. And as you've heard, there's about 1,000 in Gaza. They are suffering under the occupation like all others. I have an uncle, he owns one of the cafes in the Bethlehem Square in Bethlehem. And like everybody else, his business has had to shut down because of the, uh, of the uh, strike 
uh, in support of Gaza. Any war on the Palestinians affects the Christians just as much as it affects the Muslims. And that's not then to say that the Muslims are not targeted, they are. Because uh, along with all the rhetoric of Israel, all the racism that targets uh, 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 Palestinians as terrorists or extremists, they do uh, come under uh, extra oppressive, um, the oppressive hand of his Israeli military and leadership. Um, we're, on the, we're on the eve of Christmas, tomorrow being Christmas Eve, and I just want to remind everybody that the Red Cross existed and was supported by all the nations of Europe in its establishment. Its establishment out of, um, what was the Nightingale woman? So she was the first that, did, that uh, set it up. But it was because there were shared values in Christianity, and that was the main argument given. Over about 60, 70 years, you saw, saw an iteration of the, the rules of engagement, of the rules of war in the Geneva Conventions uh, develop and mature. And after World War II, the leaders of all sides, including the Germans, came together as the UN was just newly established, and they rewrote the fourth, they rewrote some of the clauses in the fourth Geneva Convention to provide protections of civilians. So until that date, there'd been things around protections on how soldiers behave or what they could do in war. And the fourth Geneva Convention specifically went into detail of what was acceptable, what was not acceptable in a war towards civilians. Protecting places of worship protecting places of health and care, hospitals. And so in international law, hospitals are actually the most highly protected institutions uh, under that legal framework. Those laws were put together and chaired by a committee from the newly established UN, which was uh, Mrs. Roosevelt, uh, the President Roosevelt's wife. Many in the West and even around the world would think that the four Geneva Conventions were a creation of Western Europe uh, and had no articulation or input from the rest, of, the rest of the world. And that couldn't be further from the truth. It was a committee of internationalists and one of the key authors was an, it was an Arab Christian from Lebanon. So our humanity our understanding of what was acceptable went right into that document. Today, Israel has won a, a, a presence in a select group of organizations around the world. In every war, you get hospitals or schools or civilian institutions that are hit in, in friendly fire or other, other aspects. And his name is Francis Christ. But Israel has joined one of the most extreme organizations on this planet, ISIS, which is an abhorrent, twisted version of Islam, in going in and allowing uh, patients in hospitals to either die or be killed or be taken away and arrested. ISIS, along with Israel, um, arrested doctors trying to provide care. Doctors who should be protected under international law. So today, as we stand here in Aotearoa, in New Zealand, we need to reaffirm that as citizens of this country, we believe in those, that convention. We believe in the initial Christian values that set it up. We believe in the overwhelming humanity of the globe that believes in those values. I'm half, I'm half Palestinian, half Kiwi, and my Kiwi grandfather was a World War II fighter bomber, bomber squadron leader, and he was one of the men that flew the sorties over Germany and bombed Dresden and Hamburg. He today would probably reaffirm that the Geneva Convention needs to be held up before anything else. 
He today would say those atrocities of World War II should not be recommitted. And so we ask Luxon, we ask the New Zealand Labour Party, we ask the Pāti Māori, can you reaffirm those values and those commitments to the Fourth Geneva Convention? As you heard, the Pope has called the actions of Israel terrorism. There's nearly a billion Christians worldwide, and so we should take strength from that. That Latin America, with many leaders who have called out Israel, have sent, sent their diplomatic missions back to Israel, or recalled their own diplomatic missions, are standing with us. But today, as we stand here, there are three churches in Gaza. One of them nearly 1,300 years old. There's a Baptist church, there's a Catholic church, and there's an Orthodox church. And, and those churches under, are under threat of being bombed. And as you heard, the Orthodox church was bombed and 18 people were killed. So today, whether we're Christian, Muslim, Jew, or other, we want to reaffirm that gospel of Jesus, that gospel of forgiveness, that gospel of peace, that gospel of love. We want to send a prayer to our brothers and sisters and let them know that justice is coming. Not just because we pray to God or whatever you believe in, but because we work hard and we will continue to work hard to ensure that their rights are protected and that we don't forget them. Thank you.